Hello friends, welcome to the topic Engineering Geological Consideration for Tunnel. This is pertaining to unit number 5. I am Dr. A. V. Reshpande from Civil Engineering Department. So first part is introduction. Tunnel must have been one of the earliest human construction activities made in natural caverns found in limestone. Tunnels are to be found in many of the ancient civilization. The underground routes are called as tunnels. Today, tunnels are used to facilitate transportation, generation of power, that is hydropower tunnel, and for transport and water supplies, that is diversion tunnels. So the stability and durability are the essential requirement of the construction of tunnel. A geological requirement depends upon the purpose for which the tunnel is to be constructed. Geological investigation of the tunnel includes selection of right alignment, arranging precautionary measures against various possible troubles and making an estimate of cost and time. So, the costing of excavation of tunnel is very very important. Uh, we, will, uh, we will focus more on geological investigation in this presentation. So friends, the geological investigation involves preliminary investigation followed by detailed investigation. So uh, in the preliminary investigation, brief study of the area to suggest suitable site for the construction of tunnels. So for, for this purpose, factors to be taken into consideration are first is physiography. This includes outline of topography which fails possible location for the alignment of the tunnel. Second is lithology. This includes knowledge of various rock types, unconsolidated rock detritus and presence of soil which estimates stability of tunnel. Third is structure. Knowledge of structural features helps in determining the stability of the site. Next is groundwater conditions. This is very important factor because water may create problem while excavation of tunnel and tunnel may get waterlogged especially in monsoon season. So water bearing beds, CP of water table etc. It tells precautionary measures to prevent the flooding in the tunnel. So the tunnels are classified according to the opening purposes and terrain type. First to shorten the transportation time, then to build water, then turning the river water into dam lake, next is to evacuate city waste and sewage, then to reduce traffic jam. Uh, you can have the example of metro train in the, the metro cities like Delhi, Kolkata, Madras and Bombay. Then the underground passage. Next is providing water to hydroelectric power plants. Then removing stone earth mine from underground. Then storing liquid fuel underground and it is used for factory, parking, market or military purposes. So these are the different purposes for construction and excavation of tunnel. Now we will see the pre-geological studies. And uh, on the base of this pre-geological studies, a model called engineering model for excavation of tunnel is being prepared nowadays with the help of various advanced softwares. So there's this pre-geological uh, pre studies uh, to determine the tunnel route it focuses on root and surface geology research. These are the different points pertaining to the pre-geological studies. First is lithological properties means different rock characteristics, whether that rocks are hard and soft because the type of excavation of the tunnel is decided on the basis of the rock type, their engineering properties, their lithological characteristics. Then the structural features. So this point involves the different structures, especially the 
structural geological related features like folding, faulting, joints. So these play a very crucial role in the excavation of tunnel. Then uh, cover thickness and natural stresses. The next point is engineering properties of the rocks. For example, the compressive strength is the most important engineering properties. Then modulus of rupture, plasticity, elasticity, specific gravity. These are the different engineering properties of the rocks. Next is hydrogeological properties, which is pertaining, pertaining to the ground water table. And then there is a heat problem, there is a gas problem, and there is a seismicity. So the, as far as heat problems is concerned, uh, the the air and ventilation system is to be provided uh, in the tunnel because the oxygen level in the tunnel is very low and as far as seismicity is concerned you have to consider this, the earthquake related features the tunnel should sustain and withstand in the earthquake in the, uh, in the uh, earthquake or seismic waves So the purpose of tunnel is um, for various purposes I already explained in the previous slides. Now we will see the underground surveys as far as drilling, splitting, well, gallery and geophysical methods are used. So the rocks where you are constructing this tunnel is are very important as far as lithological and petrographic properties are concerned the degree of decomposition and depth of the rock then hardness and digging properties are very important then excavation method and machine selection because in a hard rock the excavation method may differ in a soft rock excavation method is different and the machine selection is also very important nowadays the tunnel boring machine advanced tunnel boring machine is being used for construction of the tunnel which reduces the excavation time and ultimately the the project time is also getting lessened. Then the engineering features of discontinuities because there are various joints or discontinuities present at the tunnel locations so you have to tackle it with a very very careful manner. Then sensitivities of rocks to water that is melting, swelling, crustification. Then field experiments in drilling and excavation, laboratory experiments in the samples taken, then determination of physical and mechanical property. For this purpose, we have to take the laboratory. Uh, we have to take the laboratory samples in the laboratory for checking the various engineering properties and some properties we have to check in situ means at the site. Then the use of excavated material. As, a, as an aggregate in coating of the tunnel is very important. Then detailed numerical data on tunnel supports and locations are collected and preserved. Then we will see now the impact of stress on geological structures. So it is necessary to determine the violence and direction of the stream, the tunnel route and its dimensions, folds. Then syncline anticline, faults, layers, it is effective in underground stress distribution. So this is the diagram which is uh, which is clearly indicates these different geological structures. Okay, you have to tackle this geological structure very really carefully. We will see in the coming slides about the details. Then we will see the factors affecting the excavation of rocks. First is mineralogical composition of rock. Next is texture and fabric, petrographic features, structures, rock mass, strike and deep of beds in relation to the phase of excavation. It is very important point. Then intensity of tectonic disturbances and degree of weathering of the rocks. These are all the factors which affect the excavation of rocks at the tunnel site. Now we will see the effect of geological structure tunnel excavation. So the effect of soil layers in the excavation of tunnel are very really important. So the horizontal layers, vertical layers and inclined layers have different kind of loading condition.
applications for the tunnels. So here in this diagram, the different layers of the soils has been shown. Here there is a horizontal layer, here is a vertical layer and here is the inclined layers. So all these horizontal, vertical and inclined layers have different kind of loading conditions for the tunnels. Next is effect of the fold. So the fold plays a very crucial role in the tunnel excavation. So while tunnel is excavated in the area that contains folded rock, the different stresses and conditions may occur depending on the fold type. So here uh, the fold is has been shown and uh, the root of the tunnel has been shown in this first diagram. Here the fold axis and the tunnel direction is vertical. Okay, here is the fold axis and there is a tunnel direction, they are vertical. So in this situation, tunnel excavated through anticline is more suitable as they are subjected to lower pressure and, and water tend to seep away from the tunnel. Means there is no water logging or minimum water logging in the case of <coughs> the tunnel excavated in through the anticlinal portions. But as far as the tunnel excavated through the synclinal portion, there is a uh, there is a problem. So um, tunnel excavated through syncline or trough or fold would be exposed to overpressure from both sides of limbs and an accum accumulation of water there would increase the danger of seepage or infestation. So these are some pictures related to the attitude of beds. This is a safe situation where the, uh, the attitude of beds means deep and strike. So horizontal or gently dipping beds are ideal and safe for tunnel excavation. Second, uh, this diagram explains the soft bed should be underlined and overlain by hard beds. Means there, there should be an alternate beds of soft and hard uh, rock beds. This is the safe condition. The tunnel across the strike leads to leakage of the water along the bedding plane. So next slides shows you the tunnels in steeply inclined beds along the strike direction. Okay, this is your strike direction and this is your deep direction. So tunnel parallel to the deep of the layer. This shows the situation. Next is the tunneling parallel to the strike of the layer. So this is your strike direction and this is your deep direction. So here in this diagram, which indicates the tunnel parallel to the strike of the layer. Next is tunneling in steeply inclined strata parallel to deep. So this is again your strike direction and this is your deep direction and your tunnel is steeply inclined to the <coughs> parallel to the deep. Again in this diagram unsafe situation has been shown. This is steeply inclined parallel to strata. This is a strike line and this is a deep line and the tunnel is excavated which is steeply inclined to the par parallel to the strata. So this is very unsafe condition. Next diagram indicates the tunnel through faulted region which is highly unsafe location. So this is your fault and in the faulting is already a, a, a structural abnormality and there, there, uh, there is a chances of collapsing the tunnel if you excavate the tunnel through fault. So these are all the different geological, structural geological features we have seen so far. Now we will see the factors affecting cost during tunneling. So these are the two pictures of the tunnel. So we will discuss some points related to the factors affecting the cost during the tunneling. First is geological and hydrogeological status of the tunnel route. Then second is tunnel supported support and type of support because the rocks after excavation may collapse if they are not <coughs> steep and the standard time is also very important as far as excavation of the tunnel is concerned. Third is deep depth from surface to the tunnel, then diameter and shape of the tunnel.
Next is the length of the tunnel, workmanship, working days and machine malfunctioning. So these are the different factors which affects the cost during tunneling. So this is all about the preliminary geological investigation needed for excavation of the tunnel. Thank you.